In this animation, we will explain what antibodies are, how they are made, and how they are most commonly used in laboratory research. Antibodies are proteins that can specifically recognize foreign invaders or pathogens, such as viruses, bacteria, and parasites. All pathogens express a unique combination of molecules, both inside and outside their cell membranes. These are called antigens. Antibodies can serve two functions. Antibodies can neutralize pathogens by binding to their antigens and blocking their action, such as preventing a virus from entering a cell or blocking a bacterial toxin. Antibodies also mediate the destruction of pathogens by acting as markers that other cells in the immune system recognize. Antibodies are produced by specialized cells within the immune system called B lymphocytes or B cells. The immune system recognizes a wide array of antigens by producing millions of different types of antibodies, each recognizing a different antigen, with each B cell producing only one particular antibody. Antibodies are Y-shaped proteins and are made up of four polypeptides or protein chains, two identical shorter chains called light chains, and two identical longer chains called heavy chains. The N-terminus of the four polypeptide chains vary significantly in sequence from one antibody to the next and are called variable regions. Variable regions are involved in antigen binding. The other regions of the polypeptide chains vary very little in sequence among different antibodies from the same species and are called constant regions. The constant regions are responsible for interacting with effector proteins that mediate the immune response. Antibodies are produced by B cells through a process of recombination where the genes that code for portions of the antibody protein are recombined or shuffled to create many different variations of the final protein. Antibodies are first expressed on the cell membrane of immature or naive B cells that have not yet encountered antigens. Recognition of the antigen by an antibody leads to B-cell activation which results in its differentiation and clonal expansion. Differentiated B-cells or plasma cells in turn produce and secrete large amounts of their respective antibody which is released into the bloodstream to aid in the finding and targeting of additional pathogens of the same type. Upon antigen binding, B cells can be induced to produce additional antibody variation through a process called somatic hypermutation, where the DNA sequences that code for the antibody's variable regions can rapidly mutate. Antibodies with higher affinity cause further B cell activation, which results in the selection and production of highly specific antibodies to the antigen in question. Because of their ability to bind proteins with exquisite specificity, Antibodies are routinely used in research to 1. quantify the relative amount of protein present in a sample, 2. to detect the addition of a covalent modification and the binding of other proteins to the protein of interest, 3. to isolate a protein or protein complex from a cell lysate, and 4. to visualize proteins, cell structures, and processes under the microscope. To produce antibodies against an antigen of interest, researchers inject the antigen in question or a fragment of it into a mammal such as a rabbit, sheep, or goat. The resulting antibodies are isolated. A polyclonal antibody preparation contains a mixture of heterogeneous antibodies against multiple sites of the antigen. A monoclonal antibody preparation contains an antibody that recognizes only one site on the antigen. Polyclonal and monoclonal antibodies have different strengths and weaknesses. Long-term production of polyclonal antibodies requires the use of multiple individual animals, resulting in differences between different batch preparations. In contrast, monoclonals can be continuously produced from a clonal cell population and are less subject to changes. Since polyclonals can recognize multiple sites within a protein, they can amplify detection signals, but they also then cross-react more with nonspecific proteins. Monoclonals, on the other hand, do not amplify detection signals as well, but provide a lower signal-to-noise ratio due to their higher specificity. As a result, Polyclonals are better suited for detecting proteins that are expressed at low levels. They are also used to effectively detect different isoforms or versions of a protein or to screen for the presence of the protein of interest in other species. 
Monoclonals are more commonly used when purifying a protein from a mixture where specificity is important or when detection of a very specific portion of a protein or modification is desired. When detection or isolation of a protein is desired, researchers commonly use a combination of two antibodies, primary and secondary antibodies. Primary antibodies bind to specific antigens, while secondary antibodies are made to recognize and bind to the constant region of primary antibodies, which is the same within a given species. Depending on the application, secondary antibodies might be conjugated to a marker or a bead, which allows for easy detection or isolation of the protein of interest. The use of a secondary antibody leads to amplification in signal since multiple secondary antibodies can bind to a primary antibody.